Welcome to the course Environmental Impact Assessment and today we'll look at another case study and we'll look at it in two parts. So today we'll cover one part of it and uh, we'll look at uh, the case study of uh, water aerodrome uh, in Andaman and Ecobar. So we'll look at this case. Uh, this is another typology which we are looking at and this is something which new happening in the country. So we'll see how did the EIA uh, about this particular infrastructure um, was prepared. So we'll look at that aspect here. So our coverage uh, would be the, uh, we, we're going to look at this case study, um, EIA of development of water aerodrome uh, in Andaman and Nicobar. So the expected learning outcome, what is expected after you complete this particular session, these parts that you should be able to comprehensively review the case study and look at all the components what we have really studied in this subject, look at from the point of view of environmental status, what kind of development pressures we have, the EIA process and then uh, look at it from the legislative perspective and then look at it from all the domains uh, which should have been covered in this particular case and then the details of it, the tools and techniques applied and then how was the public participation and EIA report writing. So we'll, uh, we'll not uh, critically review that, I would make you walk through the report but then uh, you, uh, in our discussion forum uh, you can take it forward with uh, your understanding about all the aspects and see how this uh, EIA was undertaken and your, uh, your take and your perspective on this particular case. So uh, looking at this environmental impact assessment report, uh, this particular project is located at Swaraj Deep, which was formerly called as Havelock Islands. It's located in the Govind Nagar village and uh, in the Taluka of Port Blair and is located in the district uh, of South Andaman and uh, in Andaman and Nicobar Island. So we are looking at very typical case, island case here and then looking at very upcoming project of water aerodrome here. So this uh, project uh, was uh, proposed by looking at the project proponents is Andaman and Nicobar administration which is directorate of civil aviation and uh, the environmental consultant for this is Enviro Resources and you can see that they are a NABET certified uh, agency consultant of, to undertake the EIE and then their principal consultant are feedback infrastructure and all the tests and la work, laboratory work was done by Enviro Tech Services, Environmental Laboratories. So you can see uh, all, all, all those informations are provided here. And then you also see that there's a declaration here which has been provided by the Enviro Resources who are the environmental consultant for this. So uh, uh, they take uh, responsibility of all the uh, uh, content of EIA report uh, for the proposed development. So here you can see what we learned about how the team is. So you look at the project team here. The, the range of project team as per the uh, various domain you can see here functional areas and who were the experts involved and uh, what was the involvement into and, uh, and their endorsement. So they are responsible for the segment which they have done. And then uh, how the report is structured. If looking at the report structure here, you can see you have executive summary, which is very key element of report writing. And then you can see introduction. And then you can see the uh, chapter two deals with the project descriptions, where you will see how with a different kind of a project, you see the type of the project, uh, how the seaplane operations would take place, need of the project, why it is needed, where it is located and then looking at the size and magnitude of operations and then the technology and process description. Then uh, all, all these informations, the detailed information about the project is given. Then you can see in the chapter three, they describe uh, the environment in which the project will be located. So you see all the materials, methods and approach which will be used, the land environment, the air environment, then you see the noise environment, water environment 
soil environment, biotic environments, socioeconomic environment. So, you see all that has been covered in the report. Then you also see the environmental impact and mitigation uh, measures which they have taken including for all the key bacteria, air, noise, water, biotech and socioeconomic. So, what are the measures they have taken to mitigate the impact? Then you see here in chapter 5 analysis of alternatives. So, they have also analyzed the alternatives so which we will look in, in part 2 and then uh, environmental monitoring program. So, uh, how, how do they plan to monitor the entire thing, how they are uh, going to follow up the entire uh, 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 mitigation which they have uh, talked about and how they are going to comply by all the environmental uh, aspects which they have uh, committed for. And then uh, since it is a very unique project what you see here, so you can also see the additional studies which uh, they have undertaken. So, that is covered under chapter 7. So, you see the uh, public consultation, risk assessments that all is given and then you see within risk assessment also you can see risk assessment methodology, classification of emergency and disaster, consequence analysis, accident scenario, vulnerability and impact assessment, tsunami, flooding, seaplane, all that you can see the aircraft crash incidents, cyclone. So, all, all that aspects have been covered here, there are a range of aspects which can come up. So, all the de uh, specific additional study which was done under this project has been covered here. So, you also see that they have a disaster management plan here in addition to risk assessment, then you also see uh, within this you see range of mitigation and preparedness, preparedness policies, all that aspects is covered here within disaster management plan. So, uh, a chapter 8 you see the project benefits, so they have talked about the impact, so here you see what are the project benefits and uh, what benefit uh, will be there because of the project um, in the um, in the neighborhoods wherever the project is located. And then in chapter 9, they look at environmental cost benefit analysis. And then chapter 10, they look at environmental management plan. And uh, they summarize and conclude, which helps them to uh, make decision to the decision makers. And uh, all the disclosures of the consultants, what all, uh, who all have been involved. So, you see the list of tables here, the kind of information which has been provided from project brief to geographical locations, compliance of TOR. So, all that has been provided with all detailed data which has been co co collected. So, you see the wide range from uh, information which is there from all, all the details which uh, one needs to provide as per different domain uh, which are decided from as per the TOR or scoping of the project. So, you see all the tables and then list of figures which have to be provided. You can see the uh, all information about the project uh, and the environment and then their calculations all have been provided. So, you see how intense all the details have to be given here. And then all the uh, other supporting documents, the TOR letter and then ECBC compliance, land allotment documents and all these uh, what proceedings they had with public participations have to be given here. So, uh, first quickly looking at the executive summary, I, I would be mixing some of the things just to cut it short. So, you, you see here that uh, water aerodrome, if you see, look at the list as per the notification of 2006, does not come under EIA purview. Uh, but uh, there was concern about the uh, committee, expert appraisal committee EAC uh, related with infrastructure. So, they were of the opinion that there might be similar impact as per the normal airport and airport does come within the purview of EIA. You can see I have snipped it for you here, 7A seven, seven airports and uh, they come under category A, all projects including airstrips which are for commercial use and uh, 
So, these come under category A. So, given that context and it was water port which has not been there before uh, in Indian context. So, it, it is not there in the list, but uh, given uh, uh, the possibility of the kind of impact it might have, uh, it has been included and taken under EIA. So, looking at the project location just to understand so that all our learners understand where it is located. So, you can see here um, the island here, you see these island here. So, uh, here you see that uh, these are Andaman and Nicobar Island and there is where the project is located and you can see uh, the uh, runway here, how the water runway would be there. So, uh, these, uh, this fa project would have facilities like it will have some onshore facilities such as passenger terminal building, utility building, parking area, walkway towards floating jetty and so on and then they would have offshore facilities such as floating jetty, passenger transfer vessel, floating dock, fire and rescue boat, seaplanes and suitable water operating area and then approach and departure of paths. So, all that would be here. You can also see the passenger terminal building uh, layout here, how it would be. So, all these construction would come up for the project, all these facilities would come up. And looking at the magnitude of this, so it would, uh, the kind of uh, seaplanes which would come here would carry 19 passengers and it would have like 380 packs, the infrastructure would take care of 380 packs. So, each round trip of seaplane will carry approximate 30 passengers. So, you are seeing each uh, seaplane has 19 capacity. So, round trip it will carry 38 passenger and will have uh, considered to have 5 such trip for each of these 2 seaplanes in a day. So, you, you see how those calculations are done and then the this particular project uh, would uh, really carry passengers in the range of uh, 1 lakh passengers uh, per annum, uh, which is like 380 packs daily for 270 non-monsoon days for one sea plane. So, that is what the calculations have been made to understand the magnitude of the project. So, you can see here the uh, project site, the image of the project site. You can see here the runway and taxiway layout plan here and then all the details which are given here. So, you see how the understanding of the project detail has been developed here the uh, size of the seaplane which will be coming to this particular aerodrome and uh, the details of those technical details of the seaplane. Then you can look at the site photographs uh, where the project would come. So, you see the uh, orchard plantation on site which is there. Then you can also see uh, approach road, proposed approach road currently what is the status and then view of the proposed route for passenger transfer vehicles. So, the passenger route for that. So, you also see that uh, this particular area has environmental sensitive places. So, you uh, recollect what did we study about environmental sensitive places, how do we identify and what are the key concerns when we deal with such kind of environmental sensitive areas. So, here you see they have identified environmental sensitive places. Uh, within 15 kilometers. So, they have taken a radius of 15 kilometers for environmental sensitive areas. So, um, uh, you see areas like areas protected under international conventions. So, they are referring to all the protected areas under international convention. So, you see that uh, do they have it uh, have in this particular uh, radius what they are studying and uh, or uh, the details of those uh, projects. So, you can see Rani Chansi Marine National Park is present. Then likewise, you see areas which are important or sensitive for ec ecological reasons like wetlands, wa water courses or other water bodies. So, all those are present in this 15 kilometers. Then you see area used by protected uh, important or sensitive species of flora. So, you also see those mangrove, forest, coral and Andaman sea 
uh, are in the close proximity. So you see all these inland, coastal, marine, state, national boundaries, routes or facilities. So all these uh, sensitive uh, places have been identified. So when you're preparing AI robot, see how intensive it could be and all those details have to be given point by point. So uh, looking at the project schedule and cost here, so the project uh, estimated cost of the project is nearly 25 crores you see here and uh, the budget of the environmental management plan, so what they will do to mitigate the environmental impact would be uh, nearly 60 lakhs, 59 plus lakhs. So that is what uh, th their calculations are. And the kind of resources they would be using is land resource, water resource, power, and manpower. So if you look at the land resource, what they would be using at is like uh, 0.35 hectares on land side uh, they would be using. And then you also see water. Water will be required for project activities like domestic use, fire water storage, road washing, and for green belt development, maintenance of that and um, will be uh, channelized through the local water supply. Then you see power supply will be sourced from electrical departments and then what will be their requirements and so on. And total manpower which is uh, required is calculated to be 50 numbers for the project. So they would be uh, um, uh, requiring for this particular facility 50 numbers. So you see that here and uh, details of the geographical locations are given. You can see uh, where it is located and particularly uh, this one is done within um, India's uh, Uran program which is like Ure Desh Ka Aam Nagrik which is like which means which is said in Hindi here it means every common citizen of the country would fly. So Ure Desh Ka Aam Nagrik uh, and with the regional connectivity scheme RCS, RCS. So uh, which has been abbreviated as Uran, which means flying, flight, and uh, uh, it's, it's the program for regional connectivity. So within that, this particular project is being done. So looking at, now that was the brief description about the project, looking at the purpose of the AIA report. So we, we see that uh, the purpose of this, uh, key purpose behind this AIA report is to integrate the environmental concerns in the development activities, what we are addressing as the sustainable development, so that it, it can enable integration of environmental concerns and mitigation measures in the project development. And uh, also to have any kind of future liabilities, uh, any kind of things uh, which happen because of the project. So uh, anticipating all that and penning it down about all the actions which they're going to take. So the study area for this EIA was 10 kilometer radial area from the proposed project site and wherever it was environmental sensitive areas where it was concerning studying them, then 15 kilometer radius was taken. And for the study secondary data, was uh, collected uh, around the 10 kilometer or 15 kilometers of the site as per the uh, study purpose for, uh, for any kind of study detailed environmental monitoring they had taken 10 kilometers for the environmental sensitive area they had taken 15 kilometers. So in order to get an uh, idea about the existing state of environments various environmental uh, data were collected collected from meteorology, air quality, air water quality, soil quality and all those areas. And it was carried out, if you'll see this is fairly latest report, to December 2019 to February 2020. So the scope of the study included description of the project and associated work, so describing the project. So that becomes the key purpose, uh, key component of EIA report. Then establishing the base environment and social uh, scenario. And then identification and description of the elements of community 
an environment which would be likely to be impacted by the project. So the, those all community and environmental aspect, what kind of impact it would have. So identifying them and then describing them. And then uh, it also had the studying the existing traffic scenario, the impact on the transportation, uh, so that it would also do that, and conservation of resources, how resource efficiency is attained here, and then designing and specifying monitoring and audit requirement necessary, so how they're going to monitor and audit all what is going on at the operational stage of this project. So here we see how they are complying uh, with the TOR terms of reference. So like I said, it's the scoping stage where the TOR is used as per the domain wise, like what they really need to undertake, what they really need to study while uh, assessing the environmental impact of any kind of a project. So the, if you'll see here, they have given point by point how they are complying by the TOR. So here you see like they have reasons for selecting the site with details of alternative sites and so on which is like given in the TOR. So they have uh, like how did they comply by it. So they had uh, four sites, one, two, three, four, Charnariel, um, and then South Kalapathar, then you have Vijayanagar beach site, Lakam Harbour. So all these were studied. Uh, as alternative, so they have given it point by point and the details are given later. And then you see the details of land use breakup for proposed project in point number two, you can see detail of land use around 10 kilometer radius of the project site. So how they have worked it out and in which sections they are giving those details have been given. So likewise, you see that point three, submit the present land use and permission required for any conversion such as forest, agriculture and so on. So how, how they have complied to it. Likewise, you can see examine and submit the water bodies including the seasonal ones within the corridor of impact. So how they have taken care of that, where all they are describing, how they have documented it so that compliance is given. Like in point five, you can see submit a copy of contour plan with the slope drainage pattern of the site. So they have also created digital elevation models map, elevation profile, digital pattern uh, of 10 kilometer area, study area, which was uh, within their scope. So and then they have given all the figures which uh, addresses to this terms of reference. Likewise, you can see submit details of environmentally sensitive places, land acquisition status and then how they have addressed it, then examine the impact of proposed project on nearest settlements. So the anticipated impact, uh, what will happen during the construction and operation of the project that has been mentioned and they have also mentioned in which chapter do they cover that. So likewise you can see examine baseline environmental quality along with the project incremental load due to proposed project activities. So the baseline environmental quality had to be given. So that has entire baseline environmental quality has been provided in the report. Then you see how they have uh, examined uh, levels, quality, quantity uh, required for filling, source of filling material and all these details you can see. We'll see point number 11 where submit details regarding uh, rehabilitation and resettlement in the, uh, involved in the project. So you can see here the what compliance they have done or what do they mention here. The proposed project plot is an orchard land under forest department, under Man and Nicobar Union Territory Administration and post division uh, and uh, the said land has been allocated to Andaman and Nicobar Island Integrated Development Corporation. Thus, project plot is uninhabited and R and R aspects are not applicable. So you think about what kind of uh, resettlement, rehabilitations are required, the economical and physical, so what part they have covered and not covered. So you can reflect on that when you go through all these things. So uh, uh, here again, point number 12, you can see what are the various water requirements 
and uh, for that uh, they were uh, they are required to address that and how they have created the what detailed water balance chart for this particular project and point number 13 you can see rate water harvesting so how they have taken care of that and then solid waste generation and disposal of it and then which segments addresses to that and present land use permissions required for this purpose. So you see all the details for construction and operations have to be given. Uh, also the uh, comprehensive disaster, uh, disaster management plan which you also see saw in the um, uh, table of content of the report. Then examine baseline environmental quality uh, and then it was required to do it uh, with the incremental load due to the project, uh, project activities. So not just the baseline environmental quality but also the projected incremental load on that and how did they address that which chapters uh, have addressed it that have mentioned it. Then air quality monitoring and then uh, that has to be done then also construction operation phase both uh, for environmental management plan and environmental monitoring plan with cost and parameters. So the environmental management plan and monitoring plan have to be given so they have covered under which chapter they have covered and then what kind of corporate social responsibility CSR they are going to take care of that has been mentioned. So likewise you see um, they are required to submit details of trees to be cut including their species and whether it is also in uh, whether it also involves any protected or endangered species. So you recollect what we studied uh, how those, uh, those aspects have to be covered. So it is required by the TOR that the detailed list is prepared. Uh, we had the uh, in the previous uh, just uh, the previous lecture also we had seen like how the entire uh, for the uh, metro line the there were like 200 page list which went uh, for the details of the trees and where the trees were cut. So here again you see point number 23 where you have details of afforestation um, indicating land and financial outlay related with that. So how they are addressing it, how they are creating the green belt. Then 24 you see public hearing to be conducted for the project in accordance with the provision of um, EIA notification 2006. So we have also seen this notification and that also comes here in the TOR. So how did they comply with that? And then uh, how they have to give detailed draft EIA EMP report should be prepared in accordance with the TOR and details of litigation pending any kind of um, litigations which are involved. Uh, so that had to be mentioned here. So uh, other details like cost of project, any clarifications which are required. And uh, there are also you will see here that there are additional TOR apart from the key TOR. Uh, uh, you have importance and benefits of the project which was to be given. Then um, EIA will discuss the compliance of pollution control laws, so what laws it has to comply with. And justification for the land requirement, how much land they are uh, using it and all the uh, drawings details the maps they are using here uh, that has to be uh, provided here including all the eco sensitive areas as well and environmentally sensitive places also. Then all the maps which they had to do cost of all project and time of completion. So all that detail had to be given here. So you see range of additional TOR which has been uh, um, adopted here so you can see here all that. So um, here again you would see that since it is an island the last point which you can see here in addition to the above uh, since the proposal also was in uh, uh, you see uh, island protection zone so uh, it had to abide by IPZ notification island protection zone notification as per the report it says 2011. And uh, accordingly, they had to submit EIA and EMP report. So they have undertaken uh, all, all these considerations have also provided regular details pertaining to that. So you see how, um, how the TOR compliance has to be done. 
So, uh, you also see their reference case studies. So, uh, like since it was, it is being done uh, emerging area, it is uh, it's, it's a very newer area for Indian context. So, they also had reference case study. So, you can see uh, um, Harbor Air Vancouver, then you have Maldivian Trans Air and Kenmore uh, Air Flight and um, uh, it is in Victoria, you can see here, San Juan Islands. So, uh, uh, you see all, all these were their key references uh, on based on which they had uh, uh, also judged their possible uh, what kind of impacts it would have on what kind of domain. So, uh, we had discussed that you also adopt case study approach. So, here they have also taken case studies for their reference. And then you will see here how they have highlighted the need of the project. So, you see how, um, how the, uh, uh, there, there is growth in the aircraft operation and within this government initiative uh, for uh, uh, creating f flights for every common man of the country, this regional connectivity, within the regional connectivity scheme, this project has been created. So, uh, it is for the... Um, uh, government setup for which this project has been created. So, on that basis, they have established the need of the project. So, further you see that uh, what all uh, details they have given for project description. So, all the components which will come from passenger terminal building to facilities at the arrival area for arrival passengers. So, you see all details have been mentioned. So, uh, uh, and in uh, this is in reference with the DPR detailed project report which is prepared, designed for the project. So, based on that, what kind of impact assessment they would do, do here so that all has been. Uh, transferred uh, here as well or referred here as well. So, you see uh, all the other facilities aligned with the passenger terminal building, then the external roads, then the parking area, walkway towards floating jetty, offshore infrastructure. So, the points which we talked about, you see all the details have been discussed here. And then uh, lighting within the water operating area, a water runway and runway strips, you see uh, power and fuel requirements, and then solar power harvesting, how they would be doing water requirement and wastewater management, how they would be handling it. So, here you see how they have created the water requirements, tabulation for uh, what purpose, uh, how much water they would require and what would be the total um, a requirement, the estimation related to that. Then uh, like uh, in compliance with the TOR and uh, for also, for also for the estimation purpose, they have created the water balance flow here. And then you also see the manpower requirement what they have calculated, estimated that direct and indirect employment of about 30 to 40 numbers of people which of various skills will happen. And then also they highlight that local business will get opportunity to supply construction material and demand generated from temporary workers, colony for basic needs. And then there can be increase in the local business. So, if you remember what we had talked in the social impact assessment when we were talking about the London Bridge craze also. So, what kind of oppositions were raised, what kind of concerns were raised. Uh, so, look at that and then uh, try to see whether these uh, assessment also addresses to those kind of uh, aspects or not. So, uh, they have also given what kind of waste will be generated and how they are going to handle it, the management practice. So, uh, the tri for example, we are just looking at one. So, this uh, copy will be given to you. You can see it in detail, but just to skim through that, you look at the aircrafts uh, and then the, from the aircraft, the trash which will be collected. So, how they are going to uh, manage those waste here and then how they would also establish the STP and uh, what will be its design like and then uh, how they are going to deal with that. And then further what kind of rescue and fire fighting plan will be there, fire pump, sprinkler system, fire extinguisher. Further another thing since we are dealing with islands, you also need to no uh, notice that it would also come under CRZ. Uh, coastal regulation zone notification, so it will fall under that. So, how do they comply by that? So, CRZ mapping uh, is done as per the island protection zone notification of 2011, what they have referred here. 
And then they have demarcated all the areas of high tide level, low tide level and so on. So you see uh, that all uh, acknowledgement and mapping has been done and what will fall under what has been taken care of. So in this table you can see CRZ classification detail of the project. So uh, jetty near runway would come in CRZ 4, then proposed road would come under CRZ 3, then runway would come under CRZ 4, terminal bending would come under CRZ 3. Uh, so you see how what all elements are coming. So all that details have been given here. You can see also the CRZ map which has been created here for the project. So that was about the project description. So now we will move towards the uh, description of the environment where the project will be located. So how they are giving it. And while, while you go through this, think of what they have given, what they have not given and what more kind of impacts can come in. So a description of the project environment. So you see uh, they have uh, uh, the mythology which they have adopted uh, is like uh, that's much simplified mythology which you can see here. So collection and analysis of secondary data and statistics. So they have collected through literature review, interviewing uh, resource institutes and general public. Then they have collected primary data by sampling and then also laboratory analysis which they have mentioned in the very beginning of in the cover page itself. And then uh, how they are using laboratory analysis for air, water, ground water, drinking water, noise, soil and so on. So uh, the third step is logically analyzing the findings of assessment studies for interpretation, extrapolation and inferences. So they have uh, logically, systematically analyzed all that data as per their report. So you see how they have given all the details of summary of sampling for surface water, how many stations they used, what kind of, how many parameters were covered and uh, what was the frequency of collecting these uh, data is also mentioned. So you see the frequency of sampling as well mentioned here for all the aspect ambient air quality, ambient air quality, meteorology, water quality, ecology and so on you can see here. And then uh, looking at their method what did they adopt is like uh, one was uh, they took 10 kilometers for the environmental sensitive they took 15 kilometers then they presented the environmental status by sampling so by all uh, creating the baseline information they presented the environmental status then uh, they did the uh, cause effect by integrating one and two that is first they established the human activities around 10 kilometers then they also had environmental status so they created cause and effect uh, relationship here to understand what kind of human activities are having impact on the resources or the environment. So uh, uh, and then uh, based on that they created uh, influence zone and uh, all kind of ancillary uh, areas with respect to pollution and then they created mitigation measures uh, for the anticipated impact, environmental impact and what kind of legal provisions re are required to be obeyed. So all that was identified and uh, they also looked at the significant environmental parameters, also environmental monitoring and then also looked at the environment identification of pollution emissions and then also Im uh, impacts on environmental attributes, so what kind of impact it had and then also evaluate the predicted impact. So you have also seen how do we evaluate the predicted impact and then further they prepared the EMP and then also carried out uh, field studies for uh, establishing the existing conditions. So you can also see in the diagram here. So here you see how they have provided point by point all the details and what kind of so data source they have used. So land environment for that they have used satellite image and you see how that uh, is been brought up and then what kind of uh, land cover land uh, use statistics are there. So within what radius and uh, that all has been given here. So likewise you see how they have given for the soil, how they have given for the geology, topography, how they have done for hydrology 
and then so uh, what they have done for air environments, um, how they are monitoring air ambient air quality, and what kind of sampling procedure and analysis they are taking. Uh, so they have identified different source of air pollutions and then ambient air quality monitoring locations they have identified in the report and then all the uh, how they are following standards national ambient air quality standards and uh, what was the result of this uh, survey has been um, compared uh, with these standards so you also see that they have covered noise environment and then how they are doing it what kind of instruments are used methods of monitoring those noise that they have detailed out here Likewise, you see water environments, what locations from where they are co collecting the samples, what standards they are following, and what are the results of their sampling survey. So you see here for the similarly for groundwater and what is what are the results for groundwater, soil sampling also you see here, and then what's the results for that. So you see how different uh, locations from where they are taking, what are the different parameters you can see on soil sampling, uh, all that uh, we had studied about and then uh, and what's, what are the results coming. And then they have also studied the biotic environment and uh, here you can see different survey locations and then uh, what, uh, what, what are their observations related to different features which are coming. So you can see that in the table here, features detail. So some of the photographic evidences of uh, the biotic environmental uh, studies and surveys. So um, how, how is the site around the pro terminal building area? Then uh, banks of creeks, how they are coming here. And um, so see, see the biotic environment in and around the project area. So they have also given the ecological sensitive features summary here. So you can see here in the table ecological features, what kind of features are there, biodiversity, heritage sites. So as per the, uh, all the checklist, you can see that yes, it is present or not, what are the name, identity, details, direction from the project site and details. So you see like, I've not put all of them, but you can see a uh, national park here, which is present, Rani uh, Jhansi Marine National Park, and which is 2.87 kilometer from here, north of e northeast of the project area. So you can see this here, some of the pictures snipped for you to understand how is the park like here. And then ecological sensitive sites, you can see what all are present. So you see how sensitive the location is where the project is coming up and uh, how they are following certain norms and uh, what kind of process they are adopting to understand uh, the environmental status of that particular place. So here you see how they are describing the environment here and then the related pictures of the site, project sites you can see here. So uh, you also see that they are documenting the flora of the project and as per like uh, TOR conditions, they were supports to some of the details of the trees which are going to be cut. So in the table you see here, project site specific flora inventory has been prepared with the cutting details. So you see all the botanical names, IUCN status list. Uh, we have seen it in the, um, when we studied environmental status. So they are comparing with that and then um, that's helping them to evaluate uh, the significance of that particular loss what is happening and uh, like uh, what they are going to, how much they are going to retain, uh, which ones they are going to cut to be felled. So you can see here like number one, 63 uh, are there, 61 will be felled and only two will be retained. So on, so they are preparing a detailed list, list of that. Likewise, you can see study area flora assessment here, complete list. I have not put the complete list here. So you can see the birds, they, have, uh, they are studying. Then you can see how they are making the judgment assessment. So uh, you can see here IUCN red list category in the table here. So they are seeing number of species which they listed. And then out of that, how many are of least concern? 18 out of 20 are least concern. 
near threatened is one, vulnerable is one. So none of the recorded bird species recorded during the primary surveys listed in the schedule one of the, uh, the document here. So, uh, so here uh, uh, like uh, how uh, they need not undertake special uh, measures for that. So for the butterflies also they have undertaken, you can see also they have taken for reptiles and amphibians, you can see how they are going on comparing with the IUCN red list categories here. So they have also done socioeconomic environments here. So uh, they have undertaken baseline status um, and you see here the demographics. So number of state one, district one and village which will come within this is five. And then total population is nearly like 6,000 plus and then density of the population sex ratio you can see here. Sh there are no scheduled caste, then you sh see sh scheduled tribe, the indigenous people here, 21 percent. The literacy rate, the total workers, main workers, you can see marginal workers. And uh, so you also see evaluate what's the employment rate here or what's the sensitive uh, community which is located here. So what kind of things they have evaluated in their socioeconomic impact assessment. So that all you can review. And what kind of resources they have, they have uh, evaluated that education facilities and all kind of facilities which are there. So that has been reviewed. So recollect and rethink about what we studied when we did socioeconomic impact assessment. So they have studied all this and uh, you also think about what they have not studied in detail. Uh, there's also uh, um, news clippings which we have also given you in the suggested reading which suggests that this uh, EIA was also opposed for being inadequate in terms. So you also give your input in what ways now you have studied a uh, lot of aspects so in what ways you see this particular EIA to be adequate or inadequate. So what's your judgment and discussion on it. So now uh, looking at the environmental impact and mitigation measures. So uh, uh, after this, after looking at all these areas, they came up with the um, um, uh, what kind of impact it has and then what are the mitigation measures. So you can see here they have one for the air environment during the construction phase. So they saw that during the construction phase there will be a lot of emissions and also during the operational phase they would have. So how they are going to control the dust and other things and then uh, you see you can reconnect with the methods part which we had studied. So the model which they have uh, opted for the computation purpose. So all the models uh, have been listed here, uh, listed here which were available to them as per the uh, CPCB in, uh, norms also. So we had seen as per the TOR for different domain also they also give in Indian context and what are the standard as per the literature also we have studied what are the different models which are available. So you see how what model options were available to them, what did they adopt and what modeling procedures did they follow here. And then how did they document all that uh, emission calculations and what were the, um, you can see in the table here, what were the model input parameters and what were the values which they got here. And then what were the mitigation measures, so point by point they are giving mitigation measures, so like uh, they are taking care of the site barricade and then also uh, uh, precast factory for walls and slabs, how they are going to reduce the uh, on-site pollution here, excavation and transport shall be done during off-peak hours and so on. So those kind of mitigation measures have been taken as well as you see this mitigation measures also taken during the operational phase. So uh, they have identified possible source, so you see emissions from vehicular movement, emission from DG sets, emission from fossil fuels and then what kind of impact they are predicting. So you see here uh, that uh, emissions, uh, what kind of emissions would happen and uh, what are they uh, and how are they studying using various model dispersion models here. Uh, you can see for all the parameters they have used 
and then uh, like that you are said that they had to do the in incremental values also so how they have undertaken it how they are looking at all the parameters and how they are also uh, seeing the incremental uh, uh, values for all these parameters and then they have suggested the mitigation measures so you can see like the DG set stack with adequate height to ensure dispersion of pollutants so, so on, seaplane engine shall be maintained in good conditions, so the maintenance part of it. And then uh, they are looking at the noise, con uh, noise environment and what are the probable source and how they are going to take care of it. So, uh, here you see seaplane noise during takeoff and landing and expected in impact you can see in the table. So, you see long exposure to high sound levels can cause loss of hearing, so what kind of mitigation they would do. During takeoff and landing of seaplane, local community may feel disturbed. So uh, what kind of uh, mitigation they would take for that and then working performance of the uh, workers, humans will be affected. So what kind of things they will do. So here you see the noise contour during the operation phase. So you, we had learned about what kind of maps are prepared. So you can see that they have prepared noise contour during the operation phase. So yes, you see that they have done water environments. Uh, water environments, what kind of anticipated impact they would have, so water consumptions would be there and then how they are going to uh, adopt, what kind of mitigation measures they would adopt. So during the construction, runoff and drainage, they would, uh, they have uh, committed about good housekeeping which will handle uh, how the water is uh, uh, have, uh, drained out of the site and as uh, ev even in the operation phase. So here you see how they have all the range of anticipated impact and mitigation measures point by point. So here you see habitat loss, disposal dumping, release, and then from what activity it will happen and what is the precautionary uh, mitigation measures which they would take. And uh, so that's all uh, given here in form of a matrix here. So you can see emission, disturbance to the surrounding habitat. So you can see habitat loss, alteration, disturbance of creek bed, creek bottom, releases, emissions because of the speedboat path, path you can see here. Then you see from the floating dock what kind of imp uh, what impact it will have on which component. So here you can see again and what kind of precaution mitigations they would take. And then also socioeconomic part you see that they have said that it would have positive impact we saw that it's going to generate 40 to 50 employment. So here it says the pro proposed project does not involve any displacement of inhabitants. So there's no displacement, but we do not know it's a physical displacement or economical displacement. And then um, you also see the establishment of project will help to improve tourism. So tourism itself has its own uh, impact, negative and positive impact, and then the range of uh, the rate of change which happens, so we are not aware of that here as well. There will be job opportunity for working in the terminal building, so that's also claimed here, but we are not aware how the local community is uh, trained for uh, taking the benefit of these opportunity. And they, uh, likewise, they say that they can have, they would have increase in the hotels and restaurants, but again, the question which we had learned about, like whether how the local community is trained to take the benefit of these uh, opportunities which come up. So uh, it also talks about negative impacts about all the killed workers or contractors uh, during the construction phase uh, who would be coming here which can have uh, in um, uh, pressure on the infrastructure and then uh, there would be increase in the dust they would that would also have health issues and then also congestion, vehicular traffic and so on and then how they are going to mitigate those aspects. So uh, we do see that uh, for this particular project panel raises concerns over undermined water aerodrome project and they do uh, identify that EIU report is inadequate. So you also think and look at it like in what terms uh, it is inadequate, what aspects they have covered, to what detail and what they have not covered. So that was uh, part one of this particular case study. We'll look into all the details and um, um, I'm just going to uh, uh, ask you to reflect on all the aspects which we have covered. 
So, you keep thinking and keep discussing in the forum. So, uh, uh, so we see, uh, saw the part of this particular case study here. So, what is the scenario, what is the project like, what kind of likely impacts might happen. So, um, uh, so that was what we covered today. We will continue with this in the next session. So, our key reference for this is the uh, EIA report itself of development of water uh, aerodrome uh, in Andaman and Nicobar. And I have also given you the link and we will also share it, to you, share it with you on the um, uh, forum and it is available on the public domain so you can also access it. So, there are a lot of suggested watch and read related to this. You can uh, understand this particular case better. And you can see all these cases, references, which are there. So, winding up uh, today's session, please feel free to ask questions. Let us know about any concerns you have. Do share your opinions, experiences, and suggestions. Looking forward to interacting and co-learning with you while exploring AIA. Thank you.